This, this is Smorgasbord! Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I'm Mick, and here's my co-host... Angel. You, for you forget sometimes that we have an audio version of this. Yeah. <laughs> I was just clanking a glass, but we have a guest today. We do. We have a guest today. A loaf of bread. Hello, my name is Lofi. <laughs> She's very cute. So cute. She's For very happy. Get it? Because I'm bread. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie is made of bread. So <laughs> she you know. is made of bread. <laughs> Jamie, why don't you introduce yourself? Made of bread. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jamie. I run on bread, literally and figuratively. In spirit, In spirit. I guess. You need carbs. I'm the, the anti-angel. I love potatoes, bread. Noodles. Yeah. Rice. Actually, rice I can kind of... Eh, I'm like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You get me. I'd rather have like a loaf of freshly baked sourdough than like a bowl of freshly <laughs> boiled rice. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, baked is, just sounds better than boiled. Yeah. Although you can boil bread, that's how bagels are made. Yeah, but then they're still baked afterwards. So are they? Oh, I thought they were just boiled. They have um. They still like the crispy, the, the chewiness. Is gone from the boiling, and then you bake them to like dry them out. We just got schooled on how to bagel. How to bagel, yeah. Cool. I did not know that. I mean, I've never made bagels before, <laughs> but I've stood outside Rosemary Rock Salt. <laughs> it just stared longingly Sully's inside in, uh, Granville Island. So I, I'm pretty sure I remember them taking stuff out of the oven. I've never actually watched anyone make bagels. That'd be fun. Oh well, we have Jamie for that. <laughs> This is Jamie. She knows everything about bread as she is hugging. She's hugging a loaf of bread right now as we speak. <laughs> oh, yeah. I realized the visual gag won't make sense on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yes. So I'm holding a loaf of bread and it has two faces. One is just a smiley face. The other one's a wink face. Oh, I didn't so it really covers the gamut of bread emotions. <laughs> bread can only be happy. I don't know. On New Year's Eve, I saw like <laughs> the saddest baguette in the rain, just like outside in a puddle. Oh no! <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what its story. Nothing was. makes me sadder than seeing a squished sandwich. Yeah, that's especially one sad. that's got a footprint in it. Yeah, it's like, you know, that's there, right? <laughs> How do you miss a sandwich? <laughs> you just stand on. <laughs> you step on it. How about like yeah. really tall burgers that you have to squish? That... Oh, that's not... You're not squishing it with your shoe. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> like, you're just squishing it to put it in your mouth. <laughs> it's not the same thing. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm pouring myself a drink now. Speaking of drink, today we are covering hangover myths. So we thought that it would be that pretty appropriate to try having a real-life hangover as we're covering hangover myths. <laughs> this or... is a bad idea. Yeah, I just poured a lot of gin into my coffee. <laughs> Although, did you guys drink last night? I did not. I did not, no. Well, I had a cider with um, dinner. Is that is that one of the, the hangover trivia that you can have a hangover Whoa! on the oh, same sorry. day? <laughs> this is really gross. <laughs> coffee and gin? Yeah. It's the only alcohol I have that's not beer or white cloth. <laughs> Is it, are you having coffee to prevent the hangover? Is this the plan? No, I made the coffee 10 minutes before we were supposed to start recording. And then I was like, oh, right, we're going to drink. But like <laughs> putting White Claw in coffee is just not appetizing. Not wild that idea. Is any better. But do you have anything other than coffee to mix your alcohol with? <laughs> I do not. <laughs> I can mix my gin with my White Claw. That's another way to go. Ooh, that could work too. And then have the coffee at night. Separately? It's After, too late. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the gin yeah. is already in there. Deed's done. <laughs> Today we're, we're going to cover a bunch of hangover myths. We'll talk a little bit about what exactly is a hangover and maybe some of the science behind it. But again, as we always tell you in the show, we're not scientists. We're not doctors. Or anthropologists either. But we do research. <laughs> 
You mean you do research? <laughs> <laughs> but before we get into all the hangover myths and goodness, what's in your palate today, Angel? I had a key lime pie. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Homemade? Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't think I know how to make a key lime pie. You, you could make spam. You can't even so make a... Like, you could make anything. Spam. You just heat it up. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be impressive if you made spam from scratch. Right? True. I don't even know what... I don't want to know what goes into it. Jamie is a vegetarian, so... <laughs> oh, that's right. pretty sure she does not want to know either. <laughs> How about sure you, Jamie? We... Pig slaughtering at some point. Um, yeah, there is. What did I have? Uh, for dinner, I had a Beyond Burger salad with roast potatoes. For lunch, wow, my memory is terrible. No, I remember avocado. What did I put it with? Was it mashed or was it in slices? It was in cubes. Oh, I had a, a tofu, avocado, broccoli salad with sesame oil i think we know who wins the award for most healthy here (laughs) i literally just had key lime pie today (laughs) (laughs) i feel like a few all two of our listeners are disappointed that you didn't have any bread after all our talk Mm. about bread yeah hugging it so to warm it up to eat it later (laughs) carb wise it was the roast potatoes and then i had um granola for breakfast so have some of our grounds covered. That's why she's hugging the bread today. Because to keep missing. Give it bread. love because it <laughs> tastes better. Yeah. yeah. Mick, what bread. did you eat today? I had um so Ian made a smoked salmon benny of sorts. Kind of. Yeah, I saw it on your Instagram stories. It looks real yeah. good. Whoa, it was really I tasty. missed this. I'm going to Instagram then, right now. For dinner we I made her ratatouille yesterday because we were gonna watch ratatouille. It's like a thing that we like, I guess. Is Ratatouille made of rats? No. No. It's the movie has a rat, though. A... Yes. Ironically, I Ratatouille is a vegetarian dish mm-hmm. that was originally oh. created by the peasant class because it was yes. all cheap vegetables. Indeed. Oh. Or according Look to me getting the movie Ratatouille, Linguini says, it's like rat and patui. It's rat patui. I don't know what patui is. <laughs> Neither do I, but he said it in the movie. <laughs> but did you guys make the ratatouille like like proper, like you cooked each of the vegetables separately, or did you kind of just like chuck it in a pan? Because that's what I, I would have done. Um, well, I cooked it separately-ish, so I put the eggplant separate from the rest of the vegetables, and then separately cooked the tomatoes with the onions and garlic. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. It's good. good. It was actually pretty Mm -hmm. tasty. And then the recipe that we looked into said that it tastes better the next morning. So we tried it for dinner today again, and it was actually better. (laughs) I would, I would chuck eggs on that. Have it with toast. Mm. Ooh, no, we ended up just eating it with spam. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The first time we had ratatouille, we had it with um, corn, corn beef. And then yesterday we had it with... Bacon, spam. and today we had it in spam. How much ratatouille did you make? We made the- <laughs> Okay, so what I did is I followed the recipe's ingredient list and got just one of each, but I just didn't measure, I guess. So I just grabbed a bunch of... The eggplant Stuff. was bigger than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Oh yeah, because you got your, your, what, your Japanese eggplants that are like long and thin. Then you got your Chinese like plants that are just like fat. Big donk. Giant. Big donk. Yeah, I think I got. And I think like the Indian eggplants are really small. Oh, I see. I definitely, I think, got a badunk a donk Chinese eggplant. I was deciding between, I think, I think what you were probably describing the Japanese one and the Chinese one, but then in the grocery, the Japanese one said aubergine, which I know is eggplant, but the recipe said eggplant, so I grabbed the eggplant. Which is the ch- the Chinese eggplant said eggplant in their grocery. That's just some grocery guy making signs. <laughs> but I'm not a scientist, so who knows? Oh, before also before we actually get started with the hangover, I wanted to also spend this time as a big celebration moment because we actually hit a thousand listens. What? Wow! Never oh. Happen. Who are the victims? 
I have no idea, but we oh, hit a cool. thousand listens this year. Well, thank you for listening, whoever you are. I'm accepting sponsorship from Red Bull. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> it's really easy to get free Red Bull if you have a lot of people at your event. Just saying. <gasps> for. Mm, oh. Well, nowadays three is company, so. <laughs> and not Red in the Bull. same room. <laughs> Red Bull hit us up. Yeah. It doesn't. It, I mean, mathematically, doesn't make sense to me because we have two listeners, thirty episodes. I don't think that equals a thousand, but. Unless they're just they just love us so much they put it on loop. Ooh, true. <laughs> they're Shout like, out. we can't fall asleep unless we have smorgasbord <laughs> on board. Oh, I definitely would listen to smorgasbord to fall asleep. I'll be out in two seconds. <laughs> Since like, I hear my own voice, I'm like, out of here. <laughs> Snores, snorges board. <laughs> That'll be our episode for like sleep eating. Yeah. Some people like Ooh. they sleepwalk to oh, the fridge. Oh man, <laughs> that would make me so sad to sleep eat to be like you have all the calories but none of the memory of the joy. <laughs> what if your subconscious is like super into it, so you are getting something out of it, you just don't consciously remember. Yeah, that could be the case. I, I know some of my happiest dreams have been where I dreamt that I was at a buffet and I pigged the fuck <laughs> out and I woke up and it, and, it, and it was like, cool, you didn't eat anything, Wait. but you still remember it. <laughs> it tasted great. Wow, I've never eaten anything in my dreams before. I thought it was like a dream rule that you don't because then as soon as you put something in your mouth and you don't taste it, you'd be like, this is a dream. I don't know. Is that how it works? <laughs> Definitely eaten a lot of food. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I've I guess just eating is something. such like a. <laughs> all I dream about in my dreams are bathrooms. The opposite. What? <laughs> See, that's like that's like dangerous. Yeah. No, but I always wake up before I actually pee. <laughs> so far. So far. Not that I would make that known on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking of sleeping and eating, have you have any of you ever experienced like booze? Sirens. What do you call that? Like um, when your brain j- when you don't remember a night after drinking too blackout? much. Blackout. Blackout. Blackout drunk. Yeah. I have never blacked out. <laughs> when you black out on the word blackout, uh, <laughs> no, I'm such a lightweight that generally like. When I first started drinking, and I'd have a drink, and then I'd feel nauseous, and then I'd have to stop, and it'd be like I'd sober up, and then that was it. <laughs> yeah, same. Too too lightweight to like get to that point. Yeah. Or like that point is so wafer thin that it's like it's sober, pass out drunk. There's really <laughs> nothing in between. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the in between is kombucha. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Agree. Agree. <laughs> Yeah, I went to work once after drinking a bottle of kombucha. My friend's like, are you drunk? <laughs> I'm like, I was like beet red. <laughs> I'm like, what makes you, you think drink? I'm drunk? He's like, you're talking funny and you're really red. <laughs> when you drink kombucha, you should not operate heavy machinery. Yeah, I was driving a forklift at the time. <laughs> oh, wow. It was cool. <laughs> I think I've only been blackout once. I've seen someone in the midst of a blackout. Oh, really? And then he he did not remember anything that happened the day after. But how that do you see him if it was a blackout? He was still... S- <laughs> you could still... You still have my flashlights. <laughs> That's a very good question. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> well, he was blacked out, but I was seeing clearly... Wait, can you do a reenactment for not the podcast listeners, but for the the video podcast listeners, watchers? We'll put it it for the gram. What did he look like? Like what he was doing? Yeah, do it and I'll describe your face. I would really not like to reenact what he did because he peed in the principal's office. (laughs) No. (laughs) Yeah. This was a school party, by the way. And he was just like gotta pee and then he just disappeared but i was too drunk to like get off the couch to be like no the bathrooms are that way oh no he just like went into into like the staff hall and then disappeared in the principal's office was there a trail or did he just no i think he peed in like i think he peed in the trash can okay what happened (laughs) yeah 
I thought he was just leaving. But uh, I was not the one to find him in there uh, several minutes later. Because <laughs> some people came by, it's like, hey, have you seen him? I'm like, he's in that way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I have pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so I can actually show you guys later. Yeah, that, that one will slide into the DMs then. Okay. How about have any of you ever been hungover? I don't think I have. I to be honest. Don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. When I'm very sleep deprived and I haven't had coffee, I feel like that's the closest I could get to feeling hungover. <laughs> I know a lot of people like they're in straight up pain when they're hungover. Yeah. And I've never had yep. that before. I'm just like I'm just really thirsty. <laughs> And that, that's it. <laughs> I mean, in some yeah. ways, that could be forms of hangover, as we will find out later on in the episode. I definitely have had my fair share of hangovers, and I am not proud of any of them. <laughs> Do you say really mean things to people? <laughs> I don't, but I am definitely not a functioning hangoverolic. That's what they're called. Hung hungover. Cheers. Cheers. So gross. <laughs> I'm not gonna let coffee go to waste, by the way. So Yeah, do it for the do it for the coffee. Yeah, definitely hangovers are not as exciting as a lot of people might think. Actually I don't think anyone thinks I don't think anyone. Are exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the movie. <laughs> but for any of our listeners who haven't had a hangover themselves either, what exactly is a hangover? It's really just kind of the things you feel Hours after excessive alcohol use. Generally speaking, hangovers don't start when you wake up the next morning. It actually starts a few hours after you stop drinking. So scientifically speaking, it actually is when your blood alcohol concentration starts to drop. So that's kind of what a hangover is. You taste is. the sweet, sweet death of sobriety. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's, that's what hangover is. So your body starts reacting to... Essentially, your body goes into emergency mode and tries to f fix the decision that you made. <laughs> <laughs> when do you guys think is the worst time? Or when do you think you feel worst in a hangover? Like in terms of like body alcohol level or blood alcohol level? I don't know the numbers. <laughs> like say, I'm is like, it at the, it highest, drunk, the highest, the highest, the lowest, drunk. the zero? Not the well, highest. Because the highest, that's when you're partying the hardest. That's that's the point when you're peeing in the principal's office. It's after that. <laughs> hmm. I think it's like once you reach your peak. You're I'm like, going to go with lowest. Yeah, actually, you're, Jamie's right. You okay. feel <laughs> worse when your blood alcohol concentration is exactly at zero. This is because this is when your body actually goes from breaking down the alcohol to trying to pass all this alcohol through through your body. Um, before we go into oh. digging deep into the causes of hangover, I have a few hangover facts. <laughs> oh, right. In 2010, apparently excessive drinking cost the United States about $250 billion. The In an emergency? <laughs> Interestingly, no. What the primary that? cause is actually the loss in workplace productivity. <laughs> oh, so Which, they're drinking on the job? Or just calling they're, in the next day. They're coming into work the next day hungover, which, as someone who worked in the advertising industry, is I could attest it's to. True. <laughs> I've heard similar they, stats for depression being the number one cause of loss much. of workplace productivity. I feel like the Venn diagram of that is pretty. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, like in the agency we worked, there was someone who was either hungover, or probably depressed. At least one every day. They can do it like my old boss and just come in drunk. <laughs> I mean, there were some of <laughs> those too, yeah. <laughs> of the 250 billion, 72% is from workplace productivity. Healthcare only accounts for 11%. Law enforcement and criminal justice for only 10%. And um, sadly, motor vehicles still accounts for 5% of this um, 250 billion. Another hangover fact is, here we go, Vasalgia is a... <laughs> okay, I think I got that one right. Vasalgia. 
is from a Norwegian I word. I don't know what you're saying, but cool. <laughs> it comes from a Norwegian word of kves, kves, which translates to uneasiness after debauchery. This is actually, viselgia is the medical term for a hangover. It's a medical condition. Yeah. Diagnosable. But WebMD will still think you have toe cancer. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Go from headache to... <laughs> toe cancer. Throwing up to toe cancer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Another hangover fact is developing the parameters for hangover research can actually be difficult. Since you could only ethically give people certain amounts of alcohol if you're trying to do a controlled lab study. <laughs> they can sign rights away. They can waive their rights. <laughs> be like, I'm just in it for the booze. <laughs> but even if they do, just in terms of ethical researching practices, they can't. <laughs> As Angel reacts to her coffee and gin. Oh, it's so bad. Don't do this at home. Don't do it to yourself. <laughs> when it comes to causes for hangovers, so far they're... Doesn't seem to be one culprit when it comes to hangovers, which can explain also why hangovers are so different for everybody, since if each of us responds differently to each of these culprits, then it's very hard to actually predict how people react to hangovers, because there's so many factors involved. One cause of hangovers, though, is how you digest alcohol. I don't. So your body, the way alcohol breaks down in your body is your body breaks the ethanol into alcohol into metabolites as your body does this you start sobering up so that's why you know the sobering up proce process is when the ethanol starts disappearing from your body but ethanol actually isn't the only kind of alcohol that is inside al your alcoholic drinks there also contains small amounts of other kinds of alcohol that your body breaks down only after the ethanol and this process can take hours so one small alcohol is meant methanol which once broken down can turn into formaldehyde or formic acid which from i think a lot of us in 2021 can know these words sound <laughs> um these words aren't really good things to have in your body <laughs> formaldehyde mm, mm. that's so spicy <laughs> <laughs> knocks you right out <laughs> right okay now okay i forgot never mind <laughs> Jen is doing Keep his going. work. <laughs> Another alcohol is acetal acetaldehyde, which breaks down into acetate. And acetate is harmless generally in your body, but acetaldehyde can cause vomiting, nausea, flushed face, and sweatiness in your body. Flushed face. Yeah. Yeah, flushed face. Sounds That's familiar. <laughs> Oh, yes. Dear podcast All listeners, we are three Asians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually don't get flushed as often. Gin or vodka usually is the culprit for me that causes me to turn flush. My oh. whole body goes red. Really? I do it in splotches. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, like, it's not mine. I have like a patch here and then like a patch here. <laughs> yeah, it's not great for, for picking up. <laughs> No. <laughs> you just look diseased. For drinks. <laughs> you could own the it. least cute. You're like, hey. This, I mean, I this do. This my last night the out. The first time I... <laughs> Can I get a free drink? First time I realized I did that it was in college. It was not cute. My <laughs> roommates were like, dude, are you allergic to something? <laughs> I also get really cold and shivery when I drink. Oh, oh yeah, that too. <laughs> so for a lot of people who may have had food poisoning, the reason why these all sound familiar is because a lot of these alcohols are considered toxins. So tox these toxins yeah. in some ways are responsible for your hangover. You could also think of it as getting poisoned. <laughs> Other causes for hangovers, aside from the alcohol itself, are the congeners and sulfites that are in certain alcohols. Congeners are often apparently found in darker drinks, and these tend to cause certain elements of hangover symptoms um, while sulfites on the other hand are found in wine generally speaking some studies apparently say that these are possibly found to amplify the hangover that you may feel mm -hmm. another cause for hangovers is the fact that alcohol can act as an immunosuppression so hangovers can make your body think that you're having an infection causing it to respond by releasing cytokines and these things are 
apparently the release of cytokines can also conduct or cause you to have some of the hangover symptoms. This is why my asthma flares up when I'm drunk. Oh, really? Shit, I didn't know that. Cause of the, yeah. Because of the cytokines? Cytokines, yep. <laughs> oh. It's an antibody that, like, attacks your own body. I don't think I knew that you had asthma. Asthma? <laughs> it's, like, very, very mild. Like, I don't... It's usually just at night. At night. But it flares up. When she has coffee Sometimes. and yeah. gin. <laughs> and gin. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of immunosuppression, your hangovers can also cause your body to think that you're stressed, which can cause you to increase cortisol levels as a response. This response can cause your body to go into a fritz, furthering your hangover. But this is usually more prevalent, apparently, in alcoholics. Because when the alcohol leaves their body, they're like, something's wrong. Yeah. We need it back. Perfect solution. Just never sober up. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. hey, alcohol is the cause and solution to all of life's problems i think that's a quote from the simpsons <laughs> oh is it oh. and they're always right strangely they are it's kind of the <laughs> yeah low blood sugar dehydration stomach irritation decreased blood pressure due to blood vessels expanding are also known to happen after drinking which can cause hangovers too other behaviors like smoking or drugs can also cause hangovers to get worse and there are also a few hang factors that can affect your hangover. Generally speaking, the more alcohol you drink and the quicker you drink it actually increase the chances of you getting a hangover. So this could explain why sometimes some of you listeners who may drink things over the course of eight hours versus taking shot after shot um, can have a difference in hangover levels there. Similarly, because of that, as a consequence, the higher your breath alcohol content is, the worse your hangover can be. Now, as some people might think, because there's so many factors and there seems to be so much uncertainty how to define hangovers, one question you might ask is why we know so little about hangovers. Um, A main reason for it is because there's not really a priority for it. Even as late as the 70s, there are actually barely any research into this topic. Today, though, there's more research put into it. In 2010, the Alcohol Hangover Research Group was formed to continue the study into hangovers. Was it funded by alcohol companies? (laughs) Maybe. It might be funded by $250 billion the United States lost. (laughs) It's money put to good use. Yeah. Wasn't that the year that The Hangover came out? (laughs) Was in the movie? (laughs) Was it? Maybe. (laughs) <laughs> could be it's, it feels like around that time yes but nowadays there's much more research put into it um, there's more research even looking into how hangovers can affect long term memory this was done in the early 2000s where apparently they found that hangovers can make it harder for people to recall older memories but don't seem to actually affect recent memories or what they determined or what they define as vigilance the ability to detect events so so if you want to really erase your childhood you should just drink a lot i mean i think i feel like that's why people drink a lot too i will neither accept nor deny that claim <laughs> the <laughs> uh, hypothesis this research is also nowadays looking into how hang- hangovers can affect your executive functioning or your ability to solve problems and plan which might explain why we make some crazy decisions when we're hungover or so when you're drunk Maybe both. I I think it's both. (laughs) Yeah. When it comes to the symptoms of hangovers, apparently hangovers can last as long as 24 hours. And as we talked about, it peaks when your blood alcohol hits zero. And then it should just go away. (laughs) It does pretty much go away. Yeah. But this is also why when you are drunk when you wake up, or still drunk when you wake up, you may actually feel the worst of your hangover at the middle of the day, not when you wake up. Uh, I've been there. <laughs> so when I discovered wine, I was like, I think it'll go bad if I don't drink it all. So I drank it all. <laughs> I think I was drunk for you like 36 hours. mix it with Coke, hours. it'll be fine. Coke and wine. Mm. Mm-hmm. I still don't get the whole Coke and wine thing. I gotta try it. It's deliciously sweet. Is it's it kind of like any cherry wine? Coke. Oh. But great. Uh, red wine. Huh. It's delicious. I believe you. I believe you. Maybe I'll try it with some of the Hallmark wine I have. 
<laughs> is that even alcoholic? Or is it is. Grape juice. Oh, okay. It is alcohol. They have jingle and joy. I'm pretty sure that's what I did with the wine you gave us for um, Lolo. Oh, really? Nice. <laughs> yeah. That that might be good with Coke, actually. It has a nice oh, I think I chugged that so hard that I don't remember what happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Congrats, <laughs> you had a blackout. Yeah. There you go, there's your blackout. I, I, I don't even remember having a bottle as a thing. <laughs> I like pre-blacked out. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, so ha- I'm so happy to be a part of your blackout. <laughs> I don't think I did anything wild. I was probably just crying. <laughs> See, that's the funny thing about hangovers is because they talk about how short-term memory doesn't get affected, but I guess being drunk affects your short-term memory, but hangovers don't. No, I think it's the process of being drunk. Yeah. I mean, that's when you're blacking. I don't really know what the mechanics of blackouts are because I didn't even think that was a real thing. I thought people were just pretending to forget things. <laughs> When I was in school, they taught us when you're, if you, I don't remember how it came up, but they said, oh, if you study while you're drunk, you're only going to remember what you studied if you drink again. So the takeaway for my school of nerds was, <laughs> okay, all this math you're doing at this party, <laughs> just drink right before your exam and you'll be all good. Yay. That Did that work? Like- um, I don't know. I didn't take math. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were one of those kids. <laughs> no, I'm an English arts kid for life. No yeah. math. No math. Skip the math. Yeah. In hindsight, not not a great choice. <laughs> we're um, all in the arts. <laughs> we're the own Asians in art. Oh, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> Um, when it comes, but yeah, like when it comes to the symptoms of a hangover, it, there's actually quite a bit of symptoms. I'm surprised about this. There's fatigue, nausea, there's dehydration and thirst, vomiting, sweats, all kinds of aches from headache, muscle aches, stomach ache. There's this feeling of vertigo, light and sound sensitivity. There's also mental symptoms like anxiety, depression, irritability, memory focus, memory problems and difficulty focusing. There are also more severe symptoms that indicate severe alcohol poisoning. So this might not actually be hangovers, but alcohol That's poisoning. That's when you should just go to the hospital. Yeah. So you should go to the hospital if you feel the following. Seizures, blue or pale skin, slow or irregular breathing, or passing out or loss of consciousness. But if That's you have blue extreme. skin, then you can just be a smurf. <laughs> My diagnosis... You're a smurf. <laughs> Call me Papa Smurf. Uh, like, and, will you give me drugs? No, you're a smurf. Go home. <laughs> Go back to your mushroom. They did live in mushrooms, right? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember smurf. I just remember the time when I was a bartender and... We made this really nice blue slush drink and I wanted to call it like Blue Hawaiian or, or Blue Breeze or something. But then my boss just wanted to call it a Smurf. <laughs> and he started getting mad at me for not getting any sales. And I told him, dude, you called it a Smurf. <laughs> no one wants to order a drink called Smurf. I think I would totally order a Smurf. <laughs> I don't even what care kind of, it. What kind of bar was it? This was like a tourist trap restaurant in the middle of Steveston. Which is where Godzilla is filmed. I think you actually see the restaurant in Godzilla. Not the Japanese Godzilla or the terrible Godzilla in the 90s. But the recent Godzilla. With, mm. with uh, Brian Cranston? Yes. Yeah. Five, five minutes of him. Oh shoot, spoilers. <laughs> I haven't seen it. It's fun. I thought, I'm like, that's the only thing I know about it, that he was in it. I like it. For like my limited knowledge of Godzilla... Um, mythology that like the Japanese Godzilla stuff I think it does homage on it as good as Americans can do it I didn't know there was actually a story I just thought it was this big dragon thing that shows up and smashes things that's it <laughs> there is quite a bit I mean like the whole Godzilla thing was based on it's the funny radioactive that, l- lizard yeah based on the nuclear bomb that um, you know Americans did so it's kind of funny that America keeps trying to remake Godzilla because you know. 
colonialism. <laughs> We're going to colonize your nuclear history. <laughs> but anyway, before we get into colonialism in their only episode that's not about colonialism. <laughs> um, before we actually go to the myths of hangovers, I do want to stress the difference between a hangover and withdrawal from alcohol addiction. While there are some symptoms that are similar between a hangover and alcohol withdrawal, there are, that is very different. Withdrawal is a very serious situation for people who are addicted to alcohol. And we want to make sure that, you know, everyone who is going through withdrawal, all power to you to keep powering through it. It is definitely not a very easy process to go through it. Meanwhile, hangovers are for people who are... Made a bad decision. <laughs> Made bad decision and, you know, like, these things actually disappear, meanwhile, compared to withdrawal, which actually keeps hap happening for a longer period, while hangovers can disappear within 24 hours. So, if you are going through withdrawal, all power to you, my person, my, my dude. My liege. My liege. <laughs> So yeah, as this as we mentioned in the beginning of this episode, we are actually here to cover the myths on hangovers. We're looking specifically at myths that prevent or claim to cure slash speed up or instantly remove hangovers. There are a lot out there, and we're going to deep dive into a few of them. Give me up. One myth is related to... I kind of grouped all of these myths into one group called the types of alcohol you drink. So one of it is that apparently there's a myth going around that if you only drink one alcohol if you only drink one alcohol all night, you're not gonna get a hangover. It's a myth. It is a myth. Yeah. Some say for example that drinking only beer prevents hangovers since it only, since it contains less alcohol per serving. Which yeah, it's true that it contains less alcohol per serving. But so if you're saying, I'm only going to drink a liter of alcohol today, a liter of beer is not going to give you as bad a hangover compared to a liter of vodka or a liter of wine. <laughs> but, I mean, if you're only going to drink beer and you're going to chug an entire keg in two hours. So much peeing. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I think aside from the hangover, you're going to have a lot of other issues come up. <laughs> It's a lot of pee. <laughs> My bladder would burst before I could get <laughs> drunk enough. Right? Yeah. Uh, another thing, too, is that beer still contains congeners and alcohol, especially if you're drinking the darker beers. Um, another related myth to this is that drinking one alcohol in general um, can prevent you from having a hangover. Also myth. Again, a myth. I mean, if you're saying you're only going to drink one alcohol and you get tired of drinking one alcohol after one drink, sure. But if you're saying drinking only one alcohol, but still drinking a whole load of it over the night, it's still going to give you a hangover, whether it's the congeners or the the methanol and all that in your body. It's, your body is still going to have to digest this and process it, and it's still going to give you a hangover. Big volume. <laughs> Big volume. Big exactly. volume, bad. <laughs> exactly. The more you drink, the more you're going to get a hangover. That's pretty much... That's a. That's the rule. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to drink, like, a handle of whiskey, you're going to have a hangover. <laughs> yeah. Um, and obviously, like, you know, some people have different tolerance levels, and that's just about it. Um, another myth is drinking only expensive alcohol can prevent you from having a hangover or minimize your hangover. Why? Now, this also is a myth. Well, some lower quality alcohols may not be as pure, so it might have other toxins and blah, blah, blah. Like gasoline? Yeah. At the end of the day, that tundwai on the side street and your $300 whiskey or whatever is still alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol is alcohol. <laughs> I mean, even for some people, like, you know, whiskey and cognac are the most expensive drink, but it's also the liquor that has the most congeners because it's the darkest of the hard mm. drinks. So that might even cause you to have more alcohol or a worse hangover. Um, but 
if you do use expensive alcohol to limit the number of drinks you drink, then yeah, I guess it's not a myth. <laughs> <laughs> if you have $20 and you're going to spend $20 on Smirnoff or $20 on whatever yeah, expensive vodka Churros. there is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely not have a hangover if you eat churros. No. You can probably have a bread hangover. I don't know. Can, what Jamie, does Lofi have to say ha about that? Lofi, can you have a bread hangover? My boyfriend who's on keto would say yes. Because when he goes back to eating carbs, he gets real sleepy and feels pretty shitty. So, uh -huh. short answer, yes. There we go. Is that just the opposite of withdrawal from bread? Yeah, well... Mm. It's, it, I guess it would be similar to your body trying to cleanse your system of that or, or feeling slowed down or sluggish because your resources are diverted to dealing with all these things non or the come down from having simple carbs. So, so all the sugars in your body. So confirmed. confirmed. Bread hangover. <laughs> Bread hangover <Yep>. is true. <laughs> Sorry, Lofi. <Yeah. laughs> Another myth of alcohol is apparently avoiding sweet cocktails can cause you to not have a hangover. This is again not true because alcohol is still alcohol. <laughs> I feel like as we go through So any this, myth that includes alcohol <laughs> is a myth. Although does what you eat or consume alongside the alcohol affect the rate of metabolization with the alcohol oh we will get there but related to that apparently research seems to suggest that sugary drinks can actually slow your body's absorption of alcohol which is actually a good thing because if it slows down your body's absorption of alcohol remember how we talked about that if you spread out the alcohol you drink throughout the night your hangover isn't going to be as bad as when you don't so if you slow down your body's absorption it's the same thing, which means that you actually have a chance of not having as bad of a hangover. Now, when I say chance, that means if you're chugging down eight glasses of a Bellini, no matter how sweet that Bellini is, you're still going to get a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> Binge drinkers, beware. Yeah. No way out of this. Yeah. And also, if you have a sweet tooth, I mean, when you start drinking, you're just going to get, you're just going to not stop. And let's just say some people have had one too many Bellinis and still had a hangover the next day. <laughs> some, some people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> another common myth that you, a lot of people might have heard is the liquor before beer. You're in the clear and beer before liquor. You've never been sicker. Just like all the myths we've had. It's just a fun rhyme it is right <laughs> but it's not true alcohol is still alcohol funny thing about liquid it kind of mixes when <laughs> yeah when it's when it's in there um it also is um there's also just no scientific proof that this is true um it also could arguably be bad advice since you might actually trick yourself into drinking more <laughs> and think you're safe good job i wonder if what I felt before was like a hangover as I'm drinking and as I'm still drinking. <laughs> I don't think it's possible because <laughs> no. hangovers do happen once you stop drinking. Oh, right. Because so your blood alcohol level has to be zero. Yeah, it's a process mm. of when your body starts breaking down the toxins in you. At least one of it. So, I mean, there are other factors that contribute to hangovers. So, maybe. Hmm. Yes. That's actually, it is a good question to look into. Can you have a hangover while still drinking? <laughs> but actually related to that is the next myth, which is the hair of the dog, which is drinking alcohol when you're hungover makes you feel better or cures your alcohol, or cures your hangover. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense, right? Because you're lifting it up from zero, the zero point. Now, this actually may feel to be true, but what actually hap is happening is you're prolonging the inevitable. The hangover will come. Just <laughs> it doesn't I have to, Mick. It doesn't have to. It's like <laughs> final destination. <laughs> it's gonna come. 
Not if you keep drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this might sound like a good idea, but the if you keep doing this, the end of the road for you will also be an alcohol addiction. <laughs> so you could either face addiction or the hangover. <laughs> When it comes to research, apparently, scientifically speaking, the reason why you feel better when you start drinking again when you're hungover is that you're adding more alcohol into your body. So your body stops breaking down the small alcohols like methanol and it goes back to breaking down the newly introduced ethanol. Because that's the way apparently your body works is it breaks down the ethanol first and then all the other alcohols first. And that seems to contribute to your hangover. The hair of the dog can also make you feel more dehydrated since you're replenishing your body with alcohol instead of water or anything <laughs> that can hydrate It's you. It's actually good for you. <laughs> yeah. well, our recommendation when it comes to deciding between hair of the dog and not dogging the hair is just deal with the hangover, man. You made that decision. <laughs> <laughs> just sit. Just sit with it. Yeah. But I don't know that I've had it before. So, <laughs> the hangover or the hair of the dog? Yeah. Oh, the hangover. Both. The hangover. <laughs> it, de it definitely works, like, in the sense of you want to keep drinking, but the hangover you have after all of it is pretty brutal. <laughs> Spoken from an experienced hanger over. Hangover. -er. <laughs> hangover. -er. Moving on from alcohol based myths, we also have another big. Um, myth which is pain relievers so there's a myth that pain relievers before bed after bed or just having pain relievers let's start with yeah let's start with pain relievers before bed can prevent having a hangover in the morning the reason why this is a myth and it's actually not true is pain relievers are designed to work for only a few hours so by the time you actually wake up the pain relievers would have just worn off already <laughs> <laughs> You slept through it. Yeah, you slept through the pain relief of the pain you're going to receive. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. So yeah. wait wait on your pain reliever Yeah. until you um, wake up. Taking it while drinking alcohol can also cause you to have a worse hangover, which can make your stomach more irritated than it already is. Acetaminophen, like Tylenol, can also risk liver damage since you need your liver to break down the alcohol. And the acetaminophen <laughs> is not liver friendly, nope, as not, I know. <laughs> not liver friendly. Um, aspirin, like Bayer or Bufferin, can also hurt your liver and also risk ulcers as well. Since your stomach is busy um, dealing with the alcohol, you don't want to also add aspirin as a thing to for your body to deal with. There's no win in this situation. There really isn't. And if you think you're getting away with it with ibuprofen, well, ibuprofen can also risk kidney oh, good damage. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and drinking causes dehydration and the kidney doesn't function well when dehydrated. So if you're taking any of these pills before you're sleeping, you're risking quite a bit in the long run. It, this also runs you the risk of leading into being dependent on these um, pain relievers because you know you think it works and you keep using it and it's not good not gucci no the best is to just take it after waking up once your body has actually broken down all the alcohol in you then let your body have a chance to break down the pain relievers that you're taking apparently alka seltzers or antacids can help as well since it contains sodium bicarbonate which can help with your upset stomach if you're having an upset stomach when you're hungover um, and then electrolytes can help with your headache electrolytes I, yeah now i think it's important to note when i say help here it's not curing it it's just gonna make <laughs> it a little bit more tolerable there's I guess nothing like abstinence <laughs> yeah um, and while we're on the subject of pain relievers there's also people who take hangover pills as a way to deal with their hangovers and none of these hangover pills are actually scientifically proven to have conclusive evidence of working at all these pills usually comprise of combination of vitamins caffeine electrolytes aspirin 
that claim to help prevent or cure a hangover. Um, some might also contain di. Here we go again. Dihydromyristin. That's definitely. That sounds di poisonous. Dihydromy. Di my dihydromyristin. <laughs> sounds like straight up poison, but okay, keep going. Pretty much. Right? <laughs> Which can actually, which actually is offered to as medication to help with people with alcohol addiction and withdrawal, but as we mentioned, alcohol withdrawal is very different from a hangover. The symptoms that you may feel with hangovers and withdrawal might be similar, but biologically speaking, it's not the same thing. So if you're if the dihydromyrositin is helping you, you might not have a hangover. You might be going through withdrawal. <laughs> but you can take it anyway because it's got vitamins <laughs> well the pills might but the, <laughs> the hydromycetin is the also a lot of these pills are what you usually find in other hangover remedies like Gatorade or IV drips and while these pills may help you might actually end up drinking your heart out and if you're dependent on these pills to cure you after a ridiculous amount of alcohol the night before at the end of the day you're still you still drink a ridiculous amount of alcohol. <laughs> These that is your choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These vitamins, <laughs> electrolytes, or whatever are going to help you feel a better hangover than the hangover you could have had. <laughs> Slightly less crappy. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. It's like if you had to choose between, I don't know. A... Crappy and crappier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> and it's also to caution everybody... Some of these pills are also not regulated or FDA approved, so who knows what's in there. At the end of the day, to each their own and buyer beware. <laughs> yes, it might just be Tic Tacs, but not minty. <laughs> exactly. And at best, it will help you through the hangover. It won't cure your hangover. Maybe it has a placebo effect. You think you're going to take something that's going to like help with a hangover, and then you... Psychologically. I don't actually know how placebos work. <laughs> it's like you believe that it happens and then it happens. It could be. Mm. It's like if I give you a dish and I say it's fried chicken, but then secretly there's rice in it. <laughs> I think I would know <laughs> as soon as I bite into it. It's uh, just battered fried rice. <laughs> no, there's, ch there's actually chicken in it. <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> yeah. Here's another interesting myth: is that apparently sleep people think that sleeping off, sleeping the hangover off, will actually help you get through the hangover. Um, it may seem fine, but you actually just need to get rid of the alcohol in your system is the best way to deal with the hangover. And oh, would you say like jumping jacks would help? Yeah, you're metabolizing faster. Oh, cool. I just do that for fun. <laughs> Yeah, that could help for sure. And I really hope you're not planning to get rid of your alcohol while you're still sleeping in bed. That would be peeing in bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you had to think about that. <laughs> or if you were just like sweating real hard. True. You could sweat real hard. But that's where the jumping jacks come in. <laughs> you just turn your whole your bed into a sauna. And you're just like... Sweating out that vodka. <laughs> mm. I don't actually know if that helps, because that might actually dehydrate you more. Well, you can be drinking water at the same time. <laughs> Fair enough. But yeah, like um, Angel mentioned, exercise actually helps with... Exercise can help to deal with the hangover, since it helps bring up your circulation. It helps release endorphins, which also are natural painkillers. I think actually when I was a kid... Sorry, not a kid, but in my, in my youthful years... This is actually when I was a toddler and I was pounding the whiskey. <laughs> actually, though, <laughs> I think the first drink I had was when I was like four or five. Cause... Was it because you wouldn't go to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> no, we were in a family get together and my dad was having scotch and I think I just wanted to try it. So I don't know if I asked him if I could try it or I just grabbed the glass and I thought it was juice. <laughs> Mmm, brown juice. That Apple stings juice. your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> but allegedly, the first time I got drunk was when I was two. So. Yeah. 
I don't remember. I thought four. <laughs> I thought four was young. Oh, I beat you. Damn. <laughs> Jamie, would you know when the youngest you ever tried alcohol was? Um, my dad let me try some of his beer. I don't know what age I was. I was small. Like this is gross. I still think it's gross. So nothing's really <laughs> changed. I'm still a child. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well. <laughs> fair, fair. It's Dar- cool. We're all children in our heads. <laughs> uh, pretty much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I remember in my twenties, I used to just like try to play basketball or something when I'm hangover, and halfway through the did game, did it help? It did. It was a pretty good cure. My friends used to make fun of me for it, but it's good to know that I did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hungover exercise sounds like the opposite of fun. It's it's not fun, but I don't know. I love basketball. Thank goodness I like it. <laughs> I went to cheerleading drunk once. That was, was that? Fun. I was I really wanted to put some Kahlua in my coffee because I thought that's what cool people did. And it's like, it doesn't taste very alcoholic. So I put a little bit in. I'm like, oh, I can't taste it. So I like... Oh, Did no. the thing. Like what I do with hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just got a little drunker than I realized. And then I went to practice and I was like, oh, I can't. <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing you don't need a sense of balance for cheerleading. <laughs> I really did. They sat me out. They're like, you're not right. <laughs> Go sit in the corner. <laughs> they probably could smell it on me. <laughs> It was a weekend. It was a weekend practice, okay? That's why you're like, oh no, but I just had tiramisu for breakfast. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Whoops. Gotta soak those lady fingers in something. I don't advise anyone try cheerleading while they're drunk or doing any kind of team sports. That's like, that requires you to catch people or they will fall. I could barely um, baton toss or basket toss a cheerleader is sober, so... (laughs) Oh, it's so fun. Not when you're drunk. <laughs> nope. And oh, Jamie, here it is. When another myth that can come with hangovers is how you eat food before or during or after ha- uh, drinking. So one myth related to this or one myth is that eating food before drinking can prevent alcohol. Well, certain foods. So foods like bread, pizza, milk, even olive oil, carbs milk? or greasy Greasy food can help you prevent a hangover. I think the idea behind this is lining your stomach before With drinking. delicious grease. Yeah, mm. can help prevent a hangover. Apparently this is not fully true. It does help to have food in you though, because it can help slow down the breaking down of the alcohol. And as we talked about, slowing down the breaking down of alcohol can help you prevent a hangover. Not prevent, but minimize your hangover. But if you end up drinking a ton, you're going to get a hangover. You could, you could you could eat an entire pizza in 30 seconds. You're still going to get a hangover if you drink a whole bottle of vodka. <laughs> so it, it can potentially help, is what we're saying, but I wouldn't use it as your cure-all. We're just going to eat anyway. Yeah. Drinking <laughs> or not drinking, we'll eat. Also, related to that, eating certain foods that are acidic or salty or spicy, which are usually... Flavors you'll get when you eat pizza <laughs> or crazy food can actually make your hangover worse because these foods can help also, or these foods can cause you to have stomach related problems, which are also symptoms of hangovers. So, having stomach problems from the food you eat plus stomach problems from the alcohol you drink does not sound like a good combination. No, it's a double whammy of pain. Yeah. Another myth related to food is apparently people think that burnt toast can help you deal with your hangover i've never heard of that one (laughs) i haven't either this is the first i've heard of it but apparently it's a thing um apparently they believe that the carbon in burnt toast can treat the poison in your body from the alcohol Uh, just eat some because people take charcoal (laughs) tablets yes to fight nausea particularly with boat sickness so that kind of makes sense That is exactly, or sorry, I don't know if that's exactly, but yeah, that's pretty much why they think burnt toast can help. They believe that there is activated charcoal in burnt toast that is usually used to treat poison or those feelings of nausea. 
why do you think what is what do you think is the biggest problem when it comes to why this doesn't work? Burnt toast is bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> is it? <laughs> I don't know. Isn't there carcinogens in in the in like the ashy part of burnt toast? I think so, but the main reason why is there's actually just no charcoal in burnt toast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's just burnt toast. It's just burnt toast. <laughs> you probably made the toast when you were drunk. Another food related one is eating greasy food after drinking will cure a hangover. Um, oh, I, I know this one. <laughs> Yeah, that's not necessarily true because greasy food is just going to make your stomach worse. Now your body has to deal with the alcohol and the greasy food. And the grease. Mm. I'd rather just have greasy food. Yeah. Just have greasy food. By itself. Forget the alcohol. Yeah. Oh, I don't have a grill here to make spam. <laughs> that's the next level. <laughs> There's a Taiwanese company that does vegetarian spam and they don't deliver to Vancouver yet, but I'm so excited for when they do. Oh, I want to try that. What is vegetarian spam then? I want to I want to say like a pea protein of sorts. I'm not too sure. It could be soy, it could be other things. Oh, I see. So it's just soy. Is in it a can. pink though? They should call it soyan. Yeah. Oh yeah. Soyan. <laughs> S- soyan. Spam. Soy bam. Sabam. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I, I would be really down to try that. Yeah, oh, spam geez. sandwich, for sure. Spam it has a taste of spam, I'm so down. Spam fries. So I just get soy and a whole load of salt. And um, what was it? Like potato starch or something? Some kind of jelly. The jelly thing. Gelati- yeah. Gelatizing stuff. Yeah. yeah. Just listen to our previous episode on spam. What We talked about the different ingredients. The five ingredients. Of spam. The spam. I just remember salt. <laughs> yeah. And the pork part. Yeah. But more salt. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah, going back to the greasy food though, instead of eating greasy food, fruit is actually better. Because drinking alcohol can tend to give you low blood sugar. So eating fruit can help you deal with the hangover if that's what's causing your hangover. E bananas. Yeah. Bananas. I'm an orange person. No. We're we'll actually bananas. <laughs> apple for like what's it called? Refrigerated apples? Cold apples. Yeah. <laughs> apples that are cold. <laughs> Chilled. Yeah, pretty much. The best fruit Chilled in the world apples, is yeah. jackfruit. Ooh, jackfruits. Ooh, jackfruits. I don't know what they look like in real life. <laughs> Spiky. I've only had them dried. The dried jackfruit. Oh, is good. No, I mean like the actual thing. It's kind of like mm-hmm. durian that it's big and spiky. And then right. the flesh inside is yellow. And it's got a big seed in it. Like they're, smell they're like... little different things. No, it smells way better than durian. Okay. <laughs> I find jackfruit's like a cross between mango and pineapple. Really? Yeah. Oh, that sounds amazing. Like, it's not acidic, like it's sweet, but the flesh, it's kind of like shreddable and peelable, which is why in vegetarian cooking, you'll sometimes see jackfruit used in place for pulled pork. Instead, they'll have pulled oh, jackfruit. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. And it's sweet and tangy. Yeah, and the texture changes a lot when you cook it. Okay, I'm going to go buy a jackfruit tomorrow. A whole jackfruit? A whole jackfruit. <laughs> I don't know where to get one. <laughs> Just ask Jack. Find out. Ask <laughs> a Jack in the Box, right? At first, I was like, no, there's no way that jackfruit is like a mango and a pineapple. But the more I, I think about that. it, it actually makes sense, yeah. Like the texture, the shredded texture of pineapple and like the sweetness of mango. Yeah. You can get um, cut up jackfruit at like TNT or H Mart, mm. all the good Asian <laughs> groceries. Asian places. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. There's also a Vietnamese vegetarian restaurant in Night Street called Do Chai, which has like a jackfruit. We've been there. 
We went there together, but uh, um, so they good. opened up a location in Yelltown. <gasps> yes, they did. Yeah. Another uh, hangover myth is that chugging loads of water before bed can help you prevent a hangover. Now, while alcohol can cause dehydration, which then is a cause for hangovers, what's interesting is chugging too much water can actually be harmful. There is such a thing called water poisoning. Too much water can dilute other important minerals in your body and can overwhelm your kidneys as it tries to process all the water that you just drank. <laughs> don't, don't chug it. Like, oh, you're drowning yourself. Yeah. Have a sip of water if you feel dehydrated, but don't chug your water. The equivalent amount of water to the alcohol you drank is not going to help you cure your hangover. <laughs> What can be helpful also is you could drink water over time as you're drinking alcohol because it could also prevent you from drinking more alcohol. Replace your martini with a water teeny <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if any of you feel this, but when I drink booze, like there's a whole thing about breaking the seal, which is like if you pee once, you're just going to pee all the time when you're drinking booze. So apparently, I don't know if you guys ever heard of that mm. no <laughs> when i pee i just pee <laughs> oh yeah i don't know that's like a, and that's like every 10 minutes it's a saying that you break the seal so like when you drink booze don't pee because then you're just gonna want to pee every 10 minutes uh apparently i don't know about the breaking the seal part but the reason why you keep wanting to pee when you're drinking booze is that alcohol inhibits the, your ability to balance the, your water intakes which is why you end up feeling dehydrated but also wanting to pee at the same time that's what poison does it screws up I your body sounds really. like a urinary tract infection <laughs> yeah <laughs> it really does <laughs> for anyone who wants which people. is not a fun experience <laughs> i feel like that's a way for people to stop it's... drinking just make an ad and be like alcohol is feels like a uti <laughs> <laughs> enjoy <laughs> and again don't use drinking water throughout the night though to as a reason to drink more, because at the end of the day, alcohol is still alcohol. Alcohol is bad for you. Yeah. In large amounts. <laughs> exactly. Related to liquids, drinking coffee apparently is a belief that drinking coffee can help deal with your hangover. This, again, is similar to pain relievers. If you drink coffee before going to bed, after drinking night you're not gonna go to bed <laughs> you're not gonna go to bed and also it's like the pain relievers the coffee effects are gonna fade before you wake up the next morning and as your body's digesting the alcohol your body would have just been done with the coffee too what's even worse is that coffee also makes you dehydrated and can also make your headache worse when you're done drinking the coffee or once the effects of coffee has subsided another myth is that drinking gatorade electrolytes and iv treatments for example can help prevent the hangover. Now there's no really research to suggest that's a case. And having electrolytes in your body is sure could help, but you still need to process the electrolytes. And it apparently some research may suggest that it only processes it after you process the alcohol. Um, when it comes to IV treatments, <laughs> IV treatments are pretty expensive and pretty much do the same thing as Gatorade or electrolytes can do as well. So save your money there. Just save your money by drinking less alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> I have such good advice. Um, anyway, another myth is that apparently throwing up before you go to bed can prevent a hangover. Well, I mean, you could puke up whatever you drank, but at the end of the day, you still, your body's already started dealing with the alcohol so vomiting can actually probably make it worse for you than better um, and also if you can't control yourself from vomiting it's almost a sign that you're going to have a hangover <laughs> As, wait vomiting yeah vomiting anyone any of you ever but you would be vomiting vomiting? up all of your alcohols you wouldn't be like processing as much see that's that's the general belief about the thing but it's actually a myth because your body's actually already processing the alcohol anyway. Ah, oh, damn. Just can't, can't win. <laughs> can't, cannot win. The last myth we have here is hangovers are reminders for us 
to stop drinking too much. I just wanted to slide that in <laughs> for people who might think this is true. Um, because you could just ask anybody who's ever had a hangover in their life and ask them if they've ever stopped drinking because of a hangover. Nah, they do it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, it's kind of, you know, I don't suggest people use this as a reason to be like, oh, I'm going to have a hangover, so I'm not going to drink again tomorrow. It's like, yeah, you're probably... If you want to drink, you're going to drink. And if you have that kind of issue, you, there are people you should probably reach out to at that point. I mean, I knew one guy that's like, I'm never going to drink again. And yeah. then eight hours later, he's drinking again. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, that does happen. And there, there, that is a serious issue. And you should reach out to your local hospital or doctor to help you see if you need any further assistance in that or AA group, group. <laughs> yeah exactly. AA meeting nothing wrong with any of these but yeah those are what we have for myths when it comes to what actually works to curing or preventing hangovers but there is one way to a hundred percent avoid a hangover guaranteed which is anyone have guesses to not drink al- Alcohol. <laughs> yep. Abstinence. Abstinence. Yeah. Pretty much. The only way to avoid a hangover. Jamie got just, it. <laughs> just go to abstinence. Call your local yellow Amst- pages and call for ambulance. It's, <laughs> it's what, what the cool kids, kids do. do. It's what the cool kids do. <laughs> as Angel and I are drinking. Drink. But also, like, just learning to drink. <laughs> Learning to drink in moderation. It was helpful for me, or I was lucky to have cousins who walked me through this. My first time ever getting plastered out of my mind was with my family. And they taught me and told me, this is how it feels like to be out of control drinking. And it's not good. Learn to deal with it that way. Um, But other ways to minimize your hangover, though, is before or while drinking yeah go have something to eat before you go out it might leave you with a little belly but gives you a little front to i don't know <laughs> rub while you i don't know where i'm going with <laughs> i had a lot of tacos once i had a lot of tacos once and then i had a lot of alcohol and that was not a good mix <laughs> no <Just saying. laughs> it spicy, spi- spicy tacos um, it's not good the second time around Definitely not. Well, second, like you <laughs> ate it and no. then puked it and ate it again? No. Just it coming up is the second oh. time. <laughs> yeah, not fun. Do not recommend Fair for enough. anyone. <laughs> as we mentioned as well, drinking alcohol with fewer congeners can decrease the risk of a hangover. So not dark drinks. Vodka, gin, Pilsners. Gin only, baby. <laughs> yeah. White Claw, because it's white. It's white. <laughs> <laughs> Another tip is pacing yourself between your booze and your water. So, spacing out your alcohol. Take your time drinking. And another tip is just, if you're going to drink, don't mix it with drugs or smoking. <laughs> Just don't drink. Abstinence. 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 Listen to... Listen to drink, abstinence. abstinence. Yeah. <laughs> the other tips... Just get high on life. <laughs> high on life. Some other tips... Yeah, when... my favorite alcohol is um, kombucha, so... <laughs> <laughs> that should be a shirt. My favorite alcohol is kombucha. Um, it's kombucha. It is. It's great. <laughs> Um, other tips when it comes to uh, preventing or helping deal with hangovers is when after drinking, remember to walk around. If you feel tired, sure, take a nap, but keep yourself active. Eat fruits. Do some lean. jumping jacks. Jumping yeah. jacks. Eat fruits. No, like the prescription is eat jackfruit. jackfruit and then do jumping jacks. Yes. Jumping. You do things with the word jack in it. <laughs> jumping jackfruit. Jumping jacks. Jumping jackfruits. Yeah. 
uh, lean protein can help. Starchy vegetables can also help recover some of your missing nutrients. Uh, but at the so end of the you're day, saying veggie straws? Yes. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, at the end of the day, the only way to help you get through your hangover is time. Ain't nobody, nobody got, got time, time for that. that. <laughs> yeah. Hangovers? Exactly. Ain't nobody got time for that. Abstinence. <laughs> And as we do with every episode, we ask two favorite or two questions. Is it healthy or is it good? This is probably the only episode we'll ever have in the show where it's neither healthy nor good. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you mean good as in like, is the alcohol you're drinking good? I mean, but yeah, but that's not the hangover part, though. Oh, right. The hangover. It's not good. <laughs> the movie, though, is good. That was pretty funny. That's pretty funny. I used to have a shirt that has like the baby in the front. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what are we gonna cover next week? Maybe we I should. Don't know. Do we have plans? Maybe we should do vegetarianism. If we have veggie spam, that'd be great. Jamie, do you want to come and help us debunk some vegetarian myths? Vegetarian myths. Vegetarians don't exist. <laughs> Vegetarians, what do they eat? <laughs> you can't have How protein. How do you take your protein? Yeah. Ah, yes. I've heard all those questions before, too. How do you eat spam when you're vegetarian? So, yeah, that's our episode Yum. on hangover myths. If you have anything like a ritual or myth or something strange you want us to explore, you can find us on social media at Smorgies Pod or email us at smorgasbord at geekhappynetwork.com We'd love to hear from our two listeners. And thanks Jamie for and being And if they've here. ever been hung over. <laughs> yeah. Abstinence. Abstinence. <laughs> I think that's going to be the title of the episode. Abstinence. Abstinence. <laughs> Only hangover with you need. Toodles to smorgasbord. This show was created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Edited by Mick Narciso and Bianca Goico. Logo and graphics by Angel Lynn. Music by Mick Narciso. And videography by Bianca Goico. This show was produced by Geek Happy Network. Constantly curious about the things we love. If you enjoyed listening to Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify, YouTube, or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We would love to hear your thoughts.